Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to my live stream. It is lovely to see you here. I've just got back from a very exciting cruise. It was very different from the normal kind of cruises I take, and I can't wait to tell you all about it. Hello to everyone who is in the chat, and hello to the people who are watching this in the future on the catch-up. That is very, very cool. I took a four-night cruise on a all-inclusive cruise line over a bank holiday weekend. Um, I know not everyone calls them bank holidays, public holidays, meaning that most people who were on this cruise only had to take one day off work to do it, which is very cool. But as you can imagine, a bit of a party cruise. Uh, we do have the captain here, the real Hudson. Cameron Hudson, come say hi. If you have a question for me, if you can start it with question, preferably in capital letters, that just increases the chance that I'll be able to answer them. Thank you so much to the moderators who are looking after these chat, uh, that they are the people with the uh, wrenches, or we would call them spanners by their names. So, hey, Hudson, please don't show that end to the camera. There we go. Okay, so any cruising questions, any destination questions, cruise lines, anything about what it's like to have this strange career that I have, I will do my best to answer as many as I can. Happy Friday. Yes, happy Friday. So good to see you. These these live streams seem to come around very fast, but then once I'm doing them, they seem to finish even faster. <laughs> Uh, good question from Sam. Sam says, do you see yourself sailing on Virgin again? Yeah, at some point. Um, I don't have any need to do it right now, particularly. I've already cruised with Virgin. All of their ships are exactly the same. So I'm not rushing to do it, but I would do it. I think I would enjoy it again. So perhaps. Uh, Anna says, are there any hidden costs of an all-inclusive cruise? So normally when you say all-inclusive cruise, that means very expensive and very luxurious normally. Um, and some of those cruises are truly all inclusive. But the one that I just did was with a British cruise line called Morella. It's all inclusive. But of course, there's things you can pay for, you know, all of the main restaurants are included, but there's speciality restaurants if you want them. All of the drinks are included. But if you want, you know, the cocktails that are themed to the bars, if you want champagne instead of Prosecco, you can upgrade, <laughs> that kind of thing. The all-inclusive with Morella is really, it includes flights, it includes transfers, it includes your cruise. You don't have to spend a penny. I spent $2.40 on a cookie and it was absolutely worth it, <laughs> but you don't have to. I've done Morella cruises before where you come back with a zero pound bill and it's pretty easy. Uh, hello, Paul and Carol. Nice to see you. Paul and Carol did cruises with Morella before I ever knew that they existed. This is where I based my Morella knowledge on. And um, was this different to my other Morella cruises? So I have actually cruised on this ship before. This was the Explorer 2. And I cruised on her just after the pandemic in 2021. It was the first fly cruise I did. If you remember when you had to fill in all of the paperwork for every single country that you were going to, and it took ages and it was very stressful. That was when I did it. And I think it was around 60, 70% full when I did that cruise. And then this one was sold out. I don't know how many people were on it, but it was sold out. Um, I think this cruise was a little bit different because it was a four night cruise. And the thing is about an all inclusive cruise, if you do a seven night, if you do a 14 night, people are not out every night because they're pacing themselves, of course. But if you're only away for the weekend, no one's going to spend much time in their room, are they? Everyone wants to be by the pool. Everyone wants to be in the bars. So it was quite busy. There was music every single night. My cabin was right above the nightclub that went on until about 2am. So it was it was loud, um, but it was good fun. It was the same sort of, I think the age range and everything was the same as a normal Morella cruise. Um, the ship was exactly the same. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't a world away, but my first Morella cruise I took was a two week Baltic cruise. And that was very, very different from a four day uh, cruise around Spain, but it was very nice. It was very good. Uh, Anne says, how long does it take to make one video? So I've always had in my mind that it takes to edit a video one minute takes about an hour so a 30 minute video takes about 30 hours to edit that's not including of course filming it <laughs> and writing the script which probably takes me a couple of days um so say like two weeks to make one video i think <laughs> uh what's the longest cruise we ever took two weeks i've never done more than a two-week cruise uh two-week cruises i've done baltic cruises um yeah i think it's my longest cruise actually yeah Lots of people listening to this at work, which is very cool. I won't tell anybody. Uh, are there any activities on board you always do, say Beth and David? Ours is jackpot bingo. So I don't 
I don't know that I've ever played bingo on a cruise until my last cruise I did. And it was stressful. <laughs> I didn't find that fun. I didn't want to win because uh, I didn't want to say bingo. So uh, not for me, bingo particularly, but it was good fun. Normally, I'm more of a trivia kind of person. That's that's my go to. Uh, Carol says, is it possible for me in the UK to book my family from the US a family cruise? It is. You'll probably want to use if you're using a UK agent, you'll want to use your UK address for everybody. But it shouldn't be a problem. Um, if you need a UK travel agent or a US travel agent, I have my recommendations on my website. So just press press the button. Um, have you been to Madeira, not on a cruise? If not, I'm here now. <laughs> nice, and would highly recommend. I've only been on a cruise, um, but but lovely. I've been there sort of Christmassy time, which is so much nicer than being in England in winter. Um, <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> so many people in here. Um, is there any cruise you would rather avoid? Not cost, but because of weather, sailing days, and location. There's not ones I would avoid, I don't think particularly, but there's ones, obviously, if I had to list out 100 cruises that I want to do, there's ones that aren't on that list, um, but they would just be further down. And if I couldn't do my other ones on the list, I'd do that one. <laughs> um... Thank you, Sam, for gifting Emma Cruises memberships. They will be randomly assigned. I can't see who they go to within this software that I use, but I normally try and catch up later. Fraser says, was Morella quite a busy ship? I hear they're operating quite full at the moment. Did it feel crowded or okay? It it felt kind of busy, but not more busy than any other cruise. Um, you know, sometimes when you're on a cruise and you can't really get a seat in trivia unless you get there 15, 20 minutes early, that kind of situation. Um, but you could always just go to another bar that would be half empty. There were loads of bars. Uh, we had to wait for dinner 45 minutes once. That's the longest we waited. So like it was busy. You would expect it to be sold out. It was sold out, but it wasn't terrible. I've def definitely been on ones that were worse. We never had any trouble getting a seat in the buffet. We could have always had five tables to ourselves if we wanted. Um, so I think it did it did quite well. It's not a it's not a huge ship. The ship was originally celebra celebratory celeb okay celebrity <laughs> century uh, built in 1995, and um, she holds I think 1,800 something like that. So she's not a not a huge ship. Not a huge ship. How much roughly are excursions on a Morella cruise? They're roughly I'd say half the price of that of Royal Caribbean Norwegian the big American cruise lines. Um, I did a shuttle bus into town and back was six pounds, which is very good. I think if I was on MSC, like a budget line, or if I was on Royal Caribbean, it would have been 15. But I thought six was good. That's the thing is when a cruise line is all inclusive, if you want to upgrade to something, if you want to buy a cocktail that's not in the included thing, it's like four pounds. So I think that's pretty good. Uh, Paul says, got my world map. Shame it's missing the small islands, including the UK. That absolutely should not be missing any islands. Um, I've never heard of any missing. So absolutely get onto them and get your islands. They should be in a uh, an envelope. <laughs> so check. Check that you have that. Uh, how was the cookie? It was good. Yeah, it was good. Thank you. Um, I've had that one before. So I knew that I wanted to get that one when I got on the Morella cruise. Uh, Jan says, nice shirt. Did you design it yourself? I did, yes. And I like this one. I wear this quite a lot. So this week's discount is Cruise Crew for obvious reasons. And I tend to wear this one not on a cruise <laughs> for obvious reasons because I don't want people to think that I'm on a cruise and I work on a cruise. Uh, but if I'm just out about normally, I want I quite like that people know that I like cruises, right? People start talking to me about cruises sometimes. Jamie says, where did your Morella go? So we went from Parma and uh, we went to Alicante, Valencia and Barcelona. We did have rain, um, <laughs> but we also had sun. You know, it's better than it would have been at home. Actually, I don't know if that's true. I think you had some pretty good weather in the UK last weekend. Uh, please feel free to ask your question a couple of times. But if you have done it lots of times and I haven't answered, it may be I don't know the answer or I don't have the time to stop and read the question. If you can keep your question as short as possible, it means that I don't have to break up the live stream. And I am reading while I'm also speaking. So the shorter words you can use, the easiest, uh, more chance that I'll be able to answer it. Uh, Jason says, what YouTube channels do you watch and how many in total? I subscribe to over 100. I must subscribe to over 1,000, I'm sure. I've had my YouTube account since 
the beginning of YouTube, I think. So I have no idea. Um, I watch a lot of Cruise YouTube, of course. I try and keep up with everything, but there is a lot that's going on. And I also watch a lot of random things, things that I will never do, which is quite interesting. I think when I started this YouTube channel back in 2017, I was sort of doing it as if the person that I was speaking to was going to do the thing I did. You know, it was, you're coming on P&O Britannia, do these seven things. I don't really do that anymore because the majority of people who are watching my videos are not going to do exactly what I did. And I sort of treat my videos as if, imagine I go on a cruise and I come back and I meet my friend in the pub and they say, how was your cruise? What am I going to tell them? <laughs> That's basically what my videos are. Jess says, for Barcelona, is there a shuttle into the city? So yes, there is. It's not put on by the cruise line. There's a cruise bus that is called Cruise Bus. And it is 450 euros return um and it goes along each one and then into town and then back down um it doesn't go right into the middle of town it goes sort of to the bottom but from there we got on the hop off, hop on hop off bus and you can you can wander around from there i do wander in from the cruise terminal but it's deceptively a long way you think oh it's just over the bridge and then it's about 20 minutes yeah but their bridge takes about 20 minutes <laughs> so it does take a long time but the cruise bus has never let me down i was in a bus crash on the cruise bus once uh after my 90s cruise it crashed into a car while i was on it but still would recommend it, it was good <laughs> Uh, do you watch Jay from Ship Life? I do. He has been on this channel. So if you want to see me talk to him, you can go back on my live streams and you will you will find him. Um, mm -mm. Thank you so much for the questions. They are coming in so fast, so fast. New subscriber for my first cruise, what cruise would you recommend? I would ask you a thousand follow up questions if I met you in real life, because there's a thousand answers and most of them are probably wrong. So if you head to emmacruises.com, put in your email address, it'll send you my cruise line comparison guide. You'll be able to look at that and think, absolutely not, absolutely yes. And that will narrow it down. Then I We'll send you emails every three days with where do cruises go? What are the peak times to go to these places? What can you expect to pay? How to book it? When to book it? What cabin to book? Absolutely everything. So just put in your email address on my website and I will answer this question over about 20 days in a lot of words because that's how many words I need for this question. Do you plan on cruising with P&O Australia? I would like to. I've done a lot of P&O UK cruises, but it's very, very different in Australia, I think. It seems very relaxed. It seems like a party cruise. And I think that would be fun. I'd like to try it. Tracy says, do NCL, on NCL, do you have to wait to book the shows until on the ship or just closer to the cruise on the app? Um, I don't think I've ever booked them pre-cruise. I've always just done it on embarkation day and that's been fine. On I don't think you need to on the older ships. Maybe they've changed that, but you didn't used to. It used to be only on the new ships. Uh, Bernard says, what is there to see and do in Bermuda? I think I have written about this on my website before. Um, the most recent time I went, I, I played mini golf. <laughs> I also do some cycling workouts at home. Um, and, and it goes around Bermuda. <laughs> so I pretend that I'm in Bermuda, which is cool. Some weird proposals in the comments. Thank you so much, uh, moderators, for looking after this chat. I appreciate it. Uh, would you ever consider another Disney cruise? I would. I would want to do one of the newer ships, though. I would want to do Wish. Um, I wouldn't particularly want to do Magic or Dream. You know, I've done that one. I'd want to do something new. And I'd want to go somewhere uh, exciting. My cruise, my Disney cruise didn't go anywhere. Uh, is going on cruises your actual job? I mean, going on a cruise is not my job, uh, but I need to go on cruises to do my job. And I work when I'm on cruises. The The videos that you see are the top, like it's like an iceberg. That's like the 5% of the, the business that I run. Um, and I don't I don't need an assistant, I'm afraid. I do, I do have some employees now. Have you ever done the fjords? Yes, I have. I have. I've done the fjords quite a few times. I've done them in winter and I've done them in summer and I've been and I've seen the Northern Lights and I've done the sort of classic Royal Caribbean week cruise and they're all brilliant. That's it. They're all brilliant. Do it. Do you factor in where the ship will be on a Sunday? I don't normally think about it, but my last cruise was over the Easter weekend and we were in Valencia on Sunday. So most of it was closed. Most of the shops were closed because it was Sunday raining and Easter. 
<laughs> Hello to the cruise boys. It's nice to see you. You are back from your cruise. Exciting. Um, oh my goodness. So many questions. Thank you so much, everybody. If you can keep them as short as possible, just because I don't want to have to pause the chat to read. That is much appreciated, much appreciated. But yes, it was a very good cruise. It was absolutely not a cruise for everybody. It was really interesting for me because I meet a lot of people on cruises now. I meet people in the airport. I meet people on the bus. I meet people on the cruises. I meet people in the ports. And I always ask people how their cruise is going, uh, which is really useful for me because not, as much as I try and do everything on a cruise, there's no way I can do everything. And things like, you know, I normally eat quite early. Uh, when I meet people and they'll say, oh, well, dinner took a long time at 8 p.m. That's good for me then, though, right? Um I don't remember the question. What were we? What was I talking about? Just this cruise in general. So when I met people, it would either be, "Oh yeah, I'm having a great time," or people would be like, "Well, <laughs> it's a bit lively." <laughs> I think the thing about a Morella cruise is it's not people who do a Cunard cruise or a Princess cruise or a celebrity cruise. A lot of the people who do Morella cruises don't cruise, but they do two wee holidays and then they try a cruise, which is cool. Like we should do more of that. Um, but I think some of the more traditional cruises are a bit, it's it's different. It takes them back a bit. But I thought it was good fun. We had a lot of fun. I went with my friend. We had a very weird layout in our balcony cabin, but it worked really well for friends. It would be different if you were cruising as a couple because the bed was fixed sideways. But I got to sleep in a double bed. My friend got a double bed. So that suited us nicely. Uh, what was the demographic like on your Morella mini cruise? Many stag and Hindus. I didn't see any stag or Hindus, actually. I didn't see anything um, <laughs> that would indicate that someone was on a stag or Hindu, which is a uh, bachelor, bachelorette party, if you're not from the UK. I did take a short, similar cruise with Celebrity a while ago, and there were more Hindus on Celebrity than Morella, which was surprising. But there was definitely a lot of birthdays. You know, I'd see... 30, like 30 balloons or 50 balloons. Um, it's an adult only ship, the one that I went on, Morella Explorer 2. So that brings up the age a bit because, you know, no kids and no people who have kids, but plenty of people my age, you know, people younger than me for sure. Um, I don't know what the top end of the age would be. I'm not very good at telling people's ages, but all ages, it was pretty good. How was the food and entertainment this time round? It was the same as it has been the other times on Morella. Um, I think the food is fine and it is just fine. Uh, like it's okay. You're not going to be hungry, but also I don't think you're going to come back from a Morella cruise and be like, oh, <laughs> I had this amazing thing. It's just fine. Um, the entertainment, the theatre entertainment is some of my favourite. Like the this, this shows are so fun. And they all have a story, which I really like. I like the singing and the dancing and the costumes and the sequins and stuff. But I do like a bit of a story in there as well. So it was good. Um, younger than usual. I don't know. I think it was about normal for a Morella cruise. <laughs> Bernard never heard of the term Hindu. Yeah, we have hen and stag dudes here. Um, do you think you would do a float plane or helicopter flights during your upcoming Alaska cruise, says Sam? I I don't think so. I, d I don't think I'd like to go in a helicopter, given how travel sick I get and also a bit panicky in small places. Mm, not ideal. <laughs> don't think I'd like that. Uh, what is your favorite Royal Caribbean ship? That's a good question. So I've been on Independence, Anthem and Symphony of the Seas. And Symphony of the Seas was... I only got off that ship once in a week and I still didn't manage to do everything on that ship. It was a very different way to cruise, uh, but it was so much fun. If I wanted to really impress someone and really blow their mind about cruising, you know, a friend who's never cruised before, I would do that. I think in the middle is is my sort of preference. Anthem of the Seas was very, very nice. It depends where I'm going and what the point is. You know, I would do a cruise, I could cruise for a week on Symphony of the Seas that never left the port and I would not be bored for a second. There's aqua shows, uh, ice skating shows, theatre shows, just constant entertainment, which was, you know, you'd just be sat in the pub and then a parade would happen because why not? <laughs> That's exactly it. Uh, cruising with the 4B, it's nice to see you. Did you see any April Fools that you thought, yes, I want to be on this ship? Um, I hate to be a bit of a killjoy, but it kind of, I don't, th I don't think that they should be sharing April Fool's things on the internet, like this is a new ship or this is that, because I know how easily people get fooled. And the fact is, it's a bit different in real life. Like April Fool's in real life is cool because you can tell someone something and then say April Fool's and then they know. But people put things like, oh, this new cruise ship's coming out. 
and then it'll still be on the internet in a week or two weeks or a month and then people will be asking and I get a lot of questions about things so I prefer it if they didn't announce crazy slides and stuff that aren't real <laughs> personally yeah um what's the cruise line you went on most uh Norwegian cruise line I started when I was 11 with Norwegian and we pretty much only did Norwegian I did one every two or three years so that adds up when you start at 11 when I took my first cruise as an adult um in my head adult still comes out as adult like in an American accent can't get it out uh so that's added up pretty fast um I think I've done 13 now Norwegian cruises, which is crazy. I'm doing another one soon. I'm going back to Alaska and I'm recreating my first ever cruise, which is going to be cool. <laughs> A nice quote from me here. Emma, I get travel sick and don't like small spaces. Also, Emma, book the smallest inside cabin. There we go. I did, Yeah, that can't argue with that. That is true. Uh, what is the currency on board Morella Cruises? It is pounds, British pounds. Everything's very British. It's a... When I say it's a British cruise line, I mean it's a British experience on the cruise. I do often get a lot of comments that are like, oh, it's not, this isn't British, this isn't Italian because the headquarters in Switzerland. I don't care. Like, I care about what the cruise is like. You know, if I tell someone um, that it's a British cruise and you go on there, you're going to feel it's a British cruise. Yeah, absolutely. It's all the, the trivia. You can answer the questions because they're about Coronation Street. They're not name the 32nd president. <laughs> which I really struggle with, some of the US trivia. I think that might be a bit of an excuse. I do just struggle with trivia in general. Um, can I bring snack bags with food to my room? Uh, I mean, you can take food out the buffet to your room. You can buy food in the shops and take it to your room. If you put, you know, some crisps in your suitcase when you get on board, that's fine. No one's going to care about that. Um, I bring biscuits on pretty much every cruise that I go on because why not? Do a lot of people say cheerio on a British cruise? I've never in my life heard someone say cheerio in real life, apart from if someone's doing an impression. <laughs> never. Um, George says, how about the passengers that missed their Norwegian cruise ship in Africa last week coming back from an excursion? Do you feel it's their own fault or are the cruise lines overly strict? So I haven't looked into this specific this specific story, but I... As far as I understand, they weren't on a cruise line excursion and they mistimed it and they missed the ship. Um, that happens. That happens all the time. That happened on my, not my last cruise, the cruise before. It's up to you to get back before sail away time. They're not, it's not a secret. They tell you everywhere <laughs> what it is. So yeah, if you, yeah, I'm not going to say anything about that one. <laughs> Uh, book early or book late for best deal, says David. Yes. <laughs> can I answer yes? Uh, if you can book two or three years in advance, do it. It's very rare it will ever get cheaper than that. If you can't, if you can wait till two to three months before, that's good. But the cruise may sell out. So it, it's a risk. Sometimes sales will pop up at the one and a half year mark or the four year mark. Or this cabin you want is now sold out. So it's not that simple. It's not like you can just book 60 days before and that's the time. Depends on a lot of things. Oh, Dino says, booked a family suite on Tui Explorer next week. Uh, which day should I have breakfast in bed and which three items should I get? I have never got room service or breakfast in bed. The only, uh, I mean, on a Morella cruise, the only thing I eat for breakfast is bread and bananas. So that would be an absolute waste. <laughs> A uh, question from Mandy. What is so good about NCL? For me, I really like the no dress codes, no fixed dining, and I like the entertainment. I think the ships are pretty cool. I like their promenade decks where you can uh, sit out and eat on the promenade deck. I think that's nice. Uh, it just suits me. It doesn't suit everybody, of course, but I, li I like being able to wear shorts like any time. <laughs> Um, yeah, Africa is not a place I'd book a non-cruise excursion. Yeah, I, I quite often don't do cruise line excursions. But if I am attempting something that is, you know, somewhere where I'm nervous, you know, when I went to, uh, took a cruise from in Japan, uh, I did excursions there because it's not as easy if I want to go and see something far away for me to just, I don't know how to call a taxi. <laughs> for example, I don't have the app on my phone. If I'm somewhere local you know i would never do a cruise line excursion if i was going to liverpool for example because i could just get a train or a bus or walk 
depends depends how far away you want to go as well um i always aim to be back a couple of hours before sail away so i and i always aim wherever i am that i have a backup plan so that i could get back i would never go somewhere where it would be too far away for me to get a taxi back if for example my hop on hop off bus didn't show up yeah <laughs> Uh, Rich is in here and he says, hello from Harmony of the Seas. Amazing. Thanks to Dan and Emma for arranging my cruise. You are very welcome. Uh, Dan is my US travel agent superstar. And he's um, taught me a lot about the US cruise market, which is very different from the UK. Oh, did you know you can combine those two things, banana bread? You can, but it ruins everything. <laughs> Just stick with bananas and bread separately. Um... So many questions. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness. Have you ever dreamed of being a crew member? If you could have any job on board, would you be the captain? I've never wanted to work on a cruise ship. Um, I don't have the skills to work on a cruise ship. I get seasick. I get homesick. I don't think I would be very good at it. I have massive respect for everyone who works on cruise ships. They work incredibly hard. Every job is hard. There's no there's no easy one in there. Uh, it would it would not suit me at all. Uh, Mandy says, do you recommend P&O? I have done quite a lot of P&O cruises. I've cruised on Ventura over Christmas. I cruised on Britannia. I cruised on Iona twice and I've cruised on Arvia. So I think I think that probably says yes. It's not for everybody, of course, like any cruise line. It's very different. The older and the newer ships, the newer ones are much more uh, family orientated, much more like freestyle. The old ones are a bit more set dining times, dress up meet the captain, that kind of thing. But both good. Yeah, I, I would recommend. There's not any cruise line that I would say I don't recommend because it's just who am I recommending it for? You know, my aim is that when you watch my video, you either go, oh, that sounds good or that looks horrible. And I don't care which one you say at all. I'm not trying to convince you that this is a good cruise. I'm just trying to show you what the cruise is like so you can pick. Uh, will you do any more river cruises? Yes, I have a Uniworld river cruise coming up, which is very exciting because that's very, very luxurious, very fancy. And I've been looking at the pictures of it and my goodness, it's very different from my normal Tui river cruise. Um, but it was my travel agent, uh, talking about travel agents in the chat, who suggested it to me. There was a Christmas sale or something. And she saw this deal and she was like, Emma, this, this price is half the price, pretty much. This is my chance to get on a very fancy, fancy cruise. So I'm going to try it. I'm not sure what to expect, to be honest, from this fancy cruise. But we will see. We will see. Uh, were there any cruises you didn't really want to go on and only did it for the channel? Uh, I don't think so. No, I wouldn't do it if I didn't want to do it, because that would be a, a terrible video. <laughs> Um, is the Mediterranean pretty calm in August? Got a seasick boyfriend to deal with, says Jess. It should be. Yeah, I mean, basically what you're asking is, like, is the weather good in the Mediterranean in August? You could still get a storm. You could get a storm anywhere. It's less likely in August than any other time. But, yeah, basically the question of, like, are the seas calm is what is the weather like? <laughs> Which I wish I could answer, but I don't know. It's impossible. Um but it should be fine. Like you're very, very unlikely to get a storm in August, I would think, in the Med. And you probably don't have that many sea days on a Mediterranean cruise. Like if you have one um, at a time, you're not at sea. You're not really in the open sea so much. So, uh, Would you advise staying on the same cruise line for back-to-back -back cruises or is it as streamlined to sail on different lines? It's a bit more work, of course, if you want to get off the ship and pack and then unpack again but I think that would be more fun for me personally um depends how long you're on the cruises for I guess you could easily do two back-to-back -back week cruises um but if you were going to do like a month cruise I think I would change cruise ship for sure you probably would have you know you'll be disembarked by 9 a.m 10 a.m maybe and then the other ship you won't be getting on until at least midday probably so you've got that awkward bit at the terminal but for me, that would be cool. Um, I did recently get to go from one ship to the other when I went from my celebrity cruise on board Sun Princess for the day. And that felt very cool. I wa literally walked out the terminal, turned around, walked back into the next door terminal, <laughs> which was very cool. Um, how different is it flying to a cruise? I'm used to getting on at Southampton. It depends on which cruise company you've gone with, really. If you're doing something like Barella, uh, where there's a package, 
so easy because it is a two-e plane and everyone who's going on the cruise is coming on two-e planes so they'll have so many people at the airport you'll be getting straight on a bus that's it don't have to worry about anything if you're doing a normal flying cruise you know you're flying to greece or you're flying to barcelona or you're flying to new york and you need to stay in a hotel you need to work out taxis you need to have cash for tips uh you need to work out how you're going to walk to the port or how you're going to get that's harder of course but it could be fun um you just need to plan stuff in advance i think i think that's my my final answer um, I never saw any cruise where you could or were encouraged to fish. Are cruises allowing it? No, they'll never let you fish off a cruise ship. They used to, I think, a long time ago, but that is long, long banned. <laughs> um, do all cruise lines offer monthly payment options? No. How long do you have to pay for a cruise on average? So normally, if you book with a... Well, I book most of mine with a travel agent, so I'm going to go with that example. But normally what I will do is I'll pay a deposit depends what it is normally per person um and then it'll be say three months before that you have to pay the full balance uh, there are some cruise lines like viking i believe that need it all up front as soon as you book but most of them you just put down a deposit if you're in the us you may get refundable deposits which is nice for you <laughs> but in the uk you don't get refundable deposits um sometimes we get very low deposits but not refundable normally you can normally move them, though, or you could, you know, go to a different ship or move it later or something like that. Um, have you tried the new airport scanners yet where you can take two litres of liquid and don't need to empty your bag? No, but I was thinking about this as I was coming back through the airport because I was thinking this has never checked. Like in my life since I've been flying, this has always been the same and we've not really made any improvements. Right. So they're overdue. Uh, but that sounds very cool. I have been to airports recently where they had one of the scanners leave your stuff in the bag and the other one take it out the bag like normal. And the people who were working there were like, why am I seeing your liquids out your bag? Because that's literally how it's been <laughs> for so long. I didn't know. Um, yeah, but that sounds cool. That sounds great. Sounds good. Uh, Chris is a member. Welcome to my membership. You've been a member before. So welcome back. Welcome back. Um, yeah, Hudson was here. Hudson has has popped off because <laughs> he's a cat. I can't can't control what he wants to do. Uh, have you ever experienced other passengers behaving badly or amusingly? All the time I see people behaving amusingly and badly, you know, I've never seen anything illegal, <laughs> but badly, you know, people have bad manners all the time. Uh, people reserve sun loungers, people shop late to excursions. One thing that really annoyed me ages ago, but I did an excursion and we all had to meet 15 minutes before the time to just sit there for 15 minutes because people wouldn't show up on time. Like, just tell me the time and I'll come at the time. I'm not going to be late. <laughs> I promise. And if I am late, just go without me. That's on me. Um, but yeah. Uh, what is so British about Explorer 2, except for the quizzes and Yorkshire tea? Yeah, I mean, the food is is aimed at British people, I think. Uh, yeah, the entertainment is aimed at British people. Um, everything's just aimed at British people. They're just assuming that their customers are British because 99% of them are. Uh, can I buy old Captain Hudson's? That's a good question, but no, no, not really. <laughs> uh, no more are being made. If you can find someone that would like to sell you one, then perhaps. But there's no more being made uh no that it's once it's gone it is gone so we're in production of version four at the minute two thousand of those are being made and i'll let you know how much we raised and in, in total uh, how do i become a channel member i don't see an option for it it should just be around here somewhere there should be a join button it's next to the subscribe button i did my podcast yesterday so if ever you want to ask a question and i can't answer it on the live stream uh feel free to join us either memberships or patreon and i answer every single question in the podcast and you have i don't know hundreds <laughs> to listen to if you want to um no kettle in the cabin so not properly english i had a kettle in my cabin so i don't know why you didn't have one in yours um would you recommend taking physical dollars on NCL instead of a card? Money, physical money is pretty useless on a cruise. The only thing you can do with it really is put it into the casino machines. You can't buy drinks with it. You can't do anything in the shop with it. Uh, obviously in ports, you can tip people with it, I guess, give people it. But apart from that, you can't buy things with it. Cash is kind of useless on a cruise. Uh, when you board the cruise, when you 
go through the terminal or even before that, you'll assign a card to your account and then everything will just add up on there. Uh, Mandy asks, where can we buy the shirt that you have on? Thank you very much, Mandy. Uh, it is just emmacruzesshop.com. That's where it is. That's where all my designs are. And the discount for this one is Cru Cruise Crew. I'm having a hard time talking today. Cruise Crew. And I like this one because even when I'm wearing something like on, on a Zoom, you can still tell like from there <laughs> what it is, which is cool. Um, cashless system suits my anxiety. Yes. So easy. So easy. Um, you forget the money exists. And then when you come back and you go to the pub and you say, oh, can I have a Pepsi, please? And you want to give them that card, but it doesn't work. It's just sad. Uh, Alicante, good or bad? Very nice. Yeah, good. Absolutely good. We walked in along the pier. They were having some sort of Easter uh, music and food and everything there. There's a nice beach there. I think it was quite busy when I was there because it was Easter. Um, but it's good. It's It was a good port, yes. Uh, Darren says, wow, finally seen you on a live stream. After 34 cruises, my life is complete. <laughs> well, that's good. Thank you. Um, oh, Elizabeth says, what line do you recommend for my mother's 80th birthday? She wants to see Norway and prefers a quieter ship. I would probably be looking at Princess, Celebrity or Cunard. Um, to be honest, I think they're all in Norway most of the time. And I would probably be going for one of the smaller ships because if you're 80, you probably don't want to be walking up 22 decks. <laughs> of course, they have lifts. They do have lifts. They do have elevators. Every time I talk about taking the stairs, people say, oh, there are elevators. Yes, there are. Um, but that's that's where I would start looking. Yeah, Saga. Saga is a good choice too. Uh, Kat says, is the UK a tipping culture? No, absolutely not. Um, we don't carry, I don't carry cash. And also we have pound coins rather than notes. So it'd be really weird to give someone one pound. Like if someone takes your bag, I've never tipped a porter apart from when I'm in the US. Uh, you probably would round up. If I'm taking a taxi, I'll round it up if they're nice, but you don't have to. If I'm getting a delivery, I'll normally put on a couple of pounds maybe, but you don't have to. It's not expected. Um, it's, it's different from the US as in, yeah, you're, you're not taking something away from their salary. They're still paid a minimum wage. They're not living on tips. So, yeah, it's different. It is different. Are you doing the Hudson Packing Cubes anytime soon? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Uh, well, not me personally. I can't make them. But me and Mia Tui are, yes. So Mia Tui are sponsoring my next YouTube video that's going to come out. It is the celebrity video. If you can leave lots of nice comments on there, that would be much appreciated. And we were sort of looking at how that was going. Is the interest there? Uh, should we make Captain Hudson Packing Cubes? What colors should we do? What design should we do? And yes, I think we're going to do that, which is cool. Uh, can I leave my cabin steward a small gift? Yes, you can. I would say think about your gift a lot because they are in cabins that are way smaller than the passenger cabin. So you don't want to give someone like they don't want a shell that says where you're from on it or anything like that. Like they don't want stuff. They would like, you know, food that they can eat or give to someone else who wants to eat. Uh, maybe snacks from where you're from or things like uh, internet, like top up cards. They can work quite well. But just think about something that can be used rather than, like, taking up space. That's what I would say. Oh, Hudson's back. Hey, Hudson. Uh, thank you, Matt, for sharing my Mia Tubi discount. Yes, appreciate it. Uh, is your microphone related to Henry? I see, I see the resemblance, perhaps. Um, can we buy cruise ship gift cards for the crew? I don't think I'm, that's not really what I would recommend for, for a crew. Um, I would think things like if you're going to go to the shop, like bear in mind the crew can't always get off in ports. Sometimes they'll go a long time without getting off. If you can say, oh, I'm going out and I'm going to go to the shops. Are there any crisps you want or biscuits or chocolates or snacks or drinks? You know, imagine being you work on a Coke ship and you really want a Pepsi Max. and <laughs> There's no way you can get it. That would be the best gift. So you can just you can just ask them. Um, Herta Gruten or Harvela, which do you recommend for June of 2025? Um, so Herta Gruten are the traditional cruise line on that route. They know what they're doing. They do it very well. They have a lot of ships, but they're older ships. They are mostly sort of converted ferries into cruise ships, whereas the Harvela ones were made for cr like cruise passengers a bit more. Um I think both are very good. I think Harvel is quite a bit cheaper at the moment, so I would be probably leaning that way. But that's also because they're new, and I don't expect their prices to stay as low as they are. Hey, Hudson. 
Hudson has a thought. Uh, what is a crisp? Um, potato chips. <laughs> Crisps. <laughs> oh, hey, Hudson. Hey, Hudson. I think it's raining because Hudson is damp. At least I hope it's rain and he's not damp for another reason. Will there be a video of your Explorer 2 cruise? Yes, I'm going to make one about the cruise, uh, about, you know, things like we have karaoke. They do karaoke roulette. And this is an all-inclusive cruise, right? And people sign up to do karaoke not knowing what they're going to get. And this poor woman had Gangnam Style, which is all in Korean. <laughs> she gave it a good go. It was amazing. Um so yeah, I'll make one about the actual cruise, the food, the places we went and everything. And I'm also going to make one about our balcony cabin because it was really interesting. I had an aft balcony right above the stage of the Squid and Anchor pub. And this was very much, you know, late night music kind of cruise. It was very, very loud. It was very vibrating when we docked. Uh, we had air conditioning problems. We had everything happen in four days. So I'm going to make a video about that cabin. That's what I've been working on today. And hopefully that'll be out soon. Hopefully soon. Jess says, is Morella a Coke or Pepsi ship? It's officially, officially it's a Coke ship, but I managed to sniff out some Pepsi on there. <laughs> so they sometimes by the pool, they just have drinks, carts, you know, it's an all-inclusive cruise. So you can just go and take a beer like anytime because they're included. And there they had Pepsi Light, which is not as good as Pepsi Max, but it is a step up from Diet Coke for sure. Um... Are there things that passengers do in good faith that are not appreciated by the crew? I think it would just be giving them gifts that they don't have space for. You know, I don't know what kind of things, but I'm sure they get, they don't need like teddies that have different like place names on them or they don't have space to keep anything like that. So, um, but I mean, they'll find someone to give it to or they'll, you know, it's not a problem. I'm just thinking there's probably better, um, better things you can do. But yeah. Just, just be polite and just be helpful. Uh, Mandy says, how did you find the Morella crew? We think they are amazing. They were lovely, yes. And I was on board this cruise with my friend. And she said, um, when we went down the corridor, she was like, everyone is so nice. Make sure you tell people. <laughs> so I'm making sure I tell people. They were so lovely. They couldn't, couldn't have been nicer. Um, really, really lovely, yes. Um. Thomas says, thanks for being polite and respectful in the chat. Yes, we have the best the best bunch here, I think. I know I'm biased, uh, but we have a really good community here. It's so nice. And it's so nice. I see the same names. We've been doing these live streams. I started them really in 2020. That's when we started doing them every week. And there's people here who were here then. I know I'm also here and I was there then. <laughs> but, but yeah. Um, bring snacks from Canada. Noted. Yeah, exactly. Like imagine if. If I was working on a cruise ship and I'm from England and I'm really in the Caribbean or something and someone brought me a packet of custard creams, I would cry. I'm tearing up just thinking about it now. Like, genuinely. <laughs> yeah, Morella do have the best crew. They are absolutely lovely, yes. Jamie says, they are the best, but have they given this video a like yet? I don't know. If you can like this live stream, that would be much appreciated. Um, I am thinking that perhaps... Maybe tomorrow my celebrity video will be live for the uh, Patreons and the channel members. And then maybe Monday or Tuesday it'll be live for everybody. So that'll be cool. That is all about the cheap last minute cruise that I took on a old celebrity ship. Um, yes, it was really interesting for me as well because I was on Celebrity Infinity, which is year 2000 celebrity. And then when I went on Morella Explorer 2, she's 1995 celebrity. So there's so many things that are similar between those two ships. Um, yeah, it's really, really cool to see that. Oh, lots of people in the chat who started watching the live streams in 2020. There's the most random ones that I used to do in like 2017, 2018, 2019. But yes. Um, June says, some vloggers notify the crews that they will be on board. Do you? Absolutely not. I do everything I can to fly low. If I could, if I could go back in time and create a YouTube channel that has not my real face on it, it has like an AI version of me, I would do that every single day. And I, I never wanted fame <laughs> that was not the plan um, 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 um uh, i'm not sure i understand your question by do you plan to just sponsor a cruise this year me sponsor a cruise i'm not sure what that means 
<laughs> What's your most visited port in Europe? Barcelona. Absolutely. Pretty much all the time when I do a Mediterranean cruise, I go from Barcelona because it's so easy. The flight is really small. The time in the taxi is really easy. I know which hotels to stay in. I do it all the time. Um, yeah, cabin stewards, of course, always appreciate money. Cash is king, of course. Um, oh, I can't remember how much my Morella cruise was, to be honest. I'll have to let you know. Um, I book a lot of cruises. It was around £200 a night for the balcony cabin with the all-inclusive drinks. And I did upgrade to the premium drinks. I didn't buy any specialty dining. I spent £5 on a bingo card. I think that was about it. But say around £800 for four nights. Yeah, that's about right. Maybe 450 something like that. I will have to have a look at my booking stuff before I make my video. Uh, what is your cruise travel agent in the US? If you go to emmacruises.com, click on book, it'll come through to my US team. Uh, they are in Texas, headed up by a lovely guy called Dan. Um, doesn't matter if you're disguised, I recognize your voice. Yes, this is what happens. Sometimes I'll be in the queue of the line and, and I talk and then people are like, I knew that was you from your voice. I was considering like learning an American accent so I could throw people off, be really funny. But I don't think I can do that. Couldn't lie. Uh, bingo costs money. Yes, absolutely. Anything where you can win money costs money. They're not going to. That's how how they do bingo. So, yeah, if you want to do bingo, you have to buy tickets um, and then you can win. I think the top the top winning prize was like seven hundred and fifty pounds or something. So not bad. Oh, Jess says bloody expensive when you have to go when the kids are off school. Top tip, don't get a teacher boyfriend. So we went within the school holidays, and that's one of the reasons why we picked Morella and this ship, because it's adult only. So it didn't really make a difference. If you pick an adult only ship, it doesn't really matter so much. Um Welcome, Carol. Carol, you are a channel member. Uh, thank you. Nice to, nice to see you. You can catch up on a hundred and something podcasts of my voice if you'd like to. Uh, what your What's your phone ringtone? I have never let my phone make a noise. It doesn't know how to do a ringtone. It's always been silent. Um, what happens to the unused onboard credit at the end of the cruise? Normally, it just disappears. So spend it. Spend it in the gift shop on the last day. Um, do you play any musical instruments? The closest I come to playing a musical instrument, I mean, I do, I do play it. I have played it for about ten minutes today, uh, but I have like a key, like not not a piano. That's too strong a word, but like a keyboard that's like a piano, um, and I like to play that. Doesn't mean I can play it very well, but I like to play that. Um, let's hear your American accent. I can't risk that because. 75% of you are American. I don't want to lose 75% of my subscribers. <laughs> Maybe one day. I need to get net, get someone to teach me. Um, do you have an all-time favorite cabin? Um, my favorite balcony cabin is definitely Norwegian Prima. That was nice. Um, I also had a mini suite on Sun Princess. When I say mini suite, it was a big balcony cabin. That one was very nice. Uh, my favorite inside cabins, P&O Ziona, definitely. And also, I have been enjoying the sort of obstructed views, inside-facing cabins. Um, yeah, I've never really had a bad one. As long as it is clean, that's like, as long as it's clean, I don't really care if it's like out of fashion by 20 years. It's okay. <laughs> uh, like my accent. Thank you very much. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, if you refrain from trying an American accent, we will refrain from a British one. Thanks. Uh, Christopher says, what is the difference being a member or a Patreon? Nothing really. Um, I think Patreon's a bit of a better experience. We have a, like, I can message people and it will tell you when new content comes up. On YouTube, you kind of have to look for the new content, but it's the same. Like, the, the things you get on there are the same. We have a Discord chat for the members. We do early access to videos. I do outtakes as well. I think people like the outtakes. People sometimes think that I do my videos in a take. Like, absolutely not. Every video I make is more than a thousand separate clips put together. Uh, Jamie says, off on a cruise next Friday. Already started packing too soon. I think that's good. Good for you. Um, I can't do that. I need the pressure. I need the time to be running out before I'll do it. It is a bit different for me now, though. You know, I don't wear any of my cruise clothes when I'm at home, really. You know, 
well, it's raining here, so I wouldn't want to wear any of my cruise dresses. But I have things I leave in my suitcase. You know, I leave my adapter in the suitcase. I have my, you know, little shampoo, little conditioner that's separate from my normal ones at home. Really, I should just get two toothbrushes. <laughs> Probably be easier. But um, yeah, I like to think I'm quite good at it now. Like I'm quite practiced with packing, but I do need that pressure. Um, yeah. Uh, are there any other big vloggers you haven't met in the cruise space? I don't think so. I crossed off a lot on Sun Princess. I finally got to meet Sherry, Alana, Don. Um, I don't think there's anyone who I haven't met. The thing is, is people always say, who have you met in real life? I know people who I know on the internet far better than people I've met in real life. I can't, yeah, I just can't tell who I've met and who I haven't met. I think I've met most people now. Yeah. Yeah, Sam says I have a small packing cube with my cruise stuff and I never have to work out what to pack. Yes, I have uh same thing, like the plastic luggage tags. I don't need those in regular life. I keep them all together. Uh, can I book a Morella cruise from the US? Yes, you can. If you go to, in the description, I have the link. If you click on that one, that should work now. Morella have been a bit weird in the past where they would only accept UK cards, but... I am assured by Morella that that is fixed now. So yeah, the link is in the description or if perhaps one of my moderators could share my link. I'm trying to show Morella that people from outside the UK are interested because I've been banging on for ages saying, let people book. So if you can click on that, that would be much appreciated. Uh, Jason says, are you allowed to take liquids on a cruise ship? Wondering if I should take any bottled water. Depends on the cruise line. Some cruise lines have rules where, you know, on embarkation day, you can take eight cans of Coke and a bottle of vodka or something. Uh, some of them you can bring stuff on in any port. Some of them you can't ever bring anything on. I will say, though, if you're going through security and you have a bottle of Pepsi in your bag, like they're not going to make you pour it away. It's not the same as an airport like that if you're drinking it. Have you ever sailed with the same crew more than once and recognized anyone? Uh, I don't think so because I don't tend to go back to the same ships. And if I do, it's years and years later just just that's how i cruise i know some people you know they really love celebrity cruises and they just do celebrity cruises and they see the same crew but i tend to go from one extreme to the other you know i'll do a river cruise a ferry uh arctic circle caribbean new york i'll do all kinds of random stuff um <laughs> can you book a morella cruise without flights from the uk says carol you can it's not cheaper though so it's up to you whether you want to waste flights from London. I will say though the flights are very cheap. It'll be like a hundred pounds return. So it is what it is. It's probably probably worth just ignoring that part. I would say. Uh, can you book a P and O cruise if you reside in the US? Not easily, but we have managed to make it work. If you want to, my <laughs> um, US travel agents I think can, but it's not easy. They don't make it easy at all. We are almost at the end of this live stream. So if you do have any last minute questions and you want to get them in quick fire questions, that would be really, really cool. And then I'm going to head back to finishing this script, which is is interesting, I think. Uh, the cabin that we had actually worked out really well for us on Morello Explorer 2. But if you were someone who needed silence to sleep, that's not the cabin for you. Absolutely not. It was really weird because I sort of had to sleep with my head up because as soon as you put your head down, you could hear the bass through there and you could hear karaoke and you could you could hear if they were good or bad. Or you could hear everything. And we were also above a smoking area. So people were outside. <laughs> um, Caribbean, east or west? I would pick south. <laughs> Can I have the south? That's my favorite. I have done all three destinations in the Caribbean, but the southern Caribbean was my favorite itinerary for sure. Oh, I just found your channel. Can't afford cruising, but love your content and seeing all the different ships. Thank you very much. Yeah, I like to think that my content is okay. Even if you don't go on a cruise yourself, it's still interesting, right? If I look at what I watch on YouTube, it's not stuff that I do. Um, it's just stuff that I find interesting. And that's what I'm trying to share. Cookies or Pepsi Max? Pepsi Max. The thing is, is I have Pepsi Max every day in my life. Cookies, is a nice treat, but I could have something else. Pepsi Max. That would leave a hole in my day if I couldn't have Pepsi Max. Um, have you tried Coke Lemon? I have, yeah, quite like that. Um, quite quite like that, yeah. I did have some when I was in Greece. It was one euro, very cheap, one euro. Also, that was a bit strange because I was on the celebrity ship. It was $4.60 for a Coke, and then it's one, one euro on land. 
but um of course it is um are there lifeboats to take everyone on the cruise ship? Yes, absolutely there are. I did a bit of research into this recently about the rules. So if you are interested, go to my website, type in lifeboat, and it will come up with everything. But the short answer is yes. Yes, they have more than enough lifeboats for everybody. And they have backup options as well. Um, how did Captain Hudson 4 enjoy his first cruise? He's actually done two cruises already. This this little guy's been all over, but he's been having a good time. I think he looks good when the sky is blue and the sun is shining. This is what Captain Hudson version 4 likes. We need to start thinking about version 5. I don't know what to do for version 5, so uh, appreciate it. Oh, Mandy had midship on deck 9. No noise, slept like a log. Yeah, this was the noisiest cabin I've ever had for sure and i've cruised quite a lot uh, but it was fine i can sleep through almost anything but i think it's definitely worth me saying that so that someone else doesn't um if you were staying with kids or something that would not work at all also we did a four day cruise i think probably on a longer cruise there wouldn't be music in that lounge every night but there was which was that was what i went for so it's fine uh, do you ever watch TV shows based on cruises? I don't really watch TV shows and I haven't watched, you know, people ask me if I watched Poseidon. I don't, <laughs> don't watch anything like that, really. Chef Hudson. This was my idea, too, because when I have a look at what people are sharing, the pictures of Hudson, he's always next to food, next to a cookie. So it'd be kind of cool to be like, what does Chef Hudson think? And then we have the captain. We have this guy who's like, he must be like an entertainment guy by the pool, I think. Um, this is the original one. We have the formal night one. Maybe he works in the restaurant or something. And then we have the chef one who works in the kitchen, which would be cool. And yes, also Emma's Red Parker. Yeah, a coat one, a cold weather one. We have sun <laughs> and a cold weather one, which would be cool. Very, very cool. Um, we'll have to we'll have we'll have to wait and see, I think. I think it's where are we now? Yeah, early May. The version four will be landing. He'll be getting to everybody and then after that we'll start thinking about version five uh, i will say my favorite cruise tv shows are the ones that go into like mega ships how the cruise ships are built and you can see the cabins being built fully formed with the lamps and the all the drawers and everything and they slide them in the cruise ships they're my favorite ones you know i want to see inside the laundry i want to know how many potatoes they make i find that a lot more interesting than watching someone else on a cruise, which is probably ironic, given that that's what I do on the internet. But hey ho, no, not Hudson the pier runner. Hudson is a he's a good cruiser. He wouldn't be running. <laughs> he's on time. Um, the original one is cruise director Hudson. Yes, I think so. Passenger Hudson. Yeah, there's that. There's millions of those. Millions of those. Um, yeah, everything about symphony. Yeah, I find all of that that stuff really interesting. Jamie says, pizza tonight? Yes. And if all has gone to plan, my pizza is in the oven and being cooked for me, ready for when I get off of this live stream, which is the dream. Um, captain Hudson in a captain's uniform. That is true. He hasn't really got a captain's uniform. <laughs> but this is him. He is a cat, you know. He, he can't wear too much. Oh, Captain Hudson with the lost and found stuff left in the luggage. Magician Hudson, that would be very cool. Then do we get him like a guitar? We have band Hudson. I don't know. Uh, Martin says, quick fire question. Do you know that we all think you're brilliant? Well, thank you, Martin. Some people think I'm brilliant. Some people think I'm the worst thing <laughs> that ever happened. And that's okay. That's all right. <laughs> uh, Connie says, thanks, Emma, for another live stream. You are very welcome. Thank you for coming to the live stream. We have... 764 people here right now which imagine if you could see everybody else i want to see what everyone else is doing who's like some people are driving some people are at work listening some people are laying on the sofa someone's probably in bed probably someone's watching this on the toilet let's be honest <laughs> imagine if that was a, a zoom call interesting but yes time these hours absolutely fly by can't believe how long we've been doing them it's so funny so funny to watch the old live streams I used to talk so different. I didn't wave my hand so much, but I've learned this. I'm at work. I'm the one in the bed working from home. See, I told you. No one's going to admit to being the person on the toilet. 2 a.m. here. <laughs> nice. Eating Twiglets and drinking cider. I can't imagine what that tastes like together. <laughs> my goodness. Aw, you narrated my commute to work. Now I'm at my desk. Well, I hope you have a good day. Oh, my goodness. On the sofa. 
Finish my morning stretches. Good for you, Kim. Doing laundry, grocery shopping. Uh, what are twiglets? Oh, my goodness. How do you describe twiglets? They probably come under crispy things. They're like made like crisps, but they look like twigs. And they taste like, I don't know. How do you describe what a twiglet coated in Marmite? Yeah, like a yeast. <laughs> it doesn't sound tempting. I, I don't like those. Twigs coated in Marmite. There you go, Jamie. Oh, my goodness. Cruising from the Ozarks. I've got you here on my 80-inch TV. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Martin says just flushing. Well, with that, <laughs> I think it's time to go. Uh, the discount cruise crew on this and all of the other products that we have uh, with this on it. And thank you so much, everybody, for joining me for the live stream. I appreciate it. Um, I will be here next week at the same time, and I look forward to seeing you. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>